Hello and welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung and for this video I'd like to talk about some specific neurotransmitters. Um, if you recall from our last video dealing with synaptic communication, we have a presynaptic neuron, presynaptic membrane, vesicles containing neurotransmitter and the presynaptic axonal buton. When there's a communication that's going to happen, an action potential comes down, causes calcium or voltage gated calcium channels to open and calcium comes in here and stimulates these vesicles to undergo exocytosis and that releases neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft. The neurotransmitter then binds to these receptors and we said what happens after that depends on the neurotransmitter and the receptor involved. So what I'm going to do for one of these neurotransmitters is I'm going to take this area of the postsynaptic membrane and blow it up so we can look at what happens. And for the, the only neurotransmitter I'm going to do this with is acetylcholine or ACH. So here's my membrane. And the receptor that I'm going to, I'm going to talk about two different specific kinds of receptors. This one is going to be the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. When acetylcholine binds to the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, and I've seen it different ways. I'm not sure exactly how it really works. Um, some videos I've looked at on these um, nicotinic receptors show two molecules of acetylcholine binding. I don't know whether it's one or two, and I don't care that you know. Um, I'm sure somebody cares, and I apologize if it's really important to you. And if you want to help me out, send me that information. Um, at any rate, when acetylcholine binds to the nicotinic receptor, that nicotinic receptor is what we call a ligand gated ion channel. Ligand means a molecule that can bind to this receptor and in this case acetylcholine is the ligand. The receptor is a ligand gated ion channel so when it binds its ligand, the acetylcholine, the channel opens and an open nicotinic acetylcholine receptor allows sodium and potassium to flow freely through the channel. So sodium flows into the cell. If you recall, the sodium potassium pump pumps sodium out of the cell and pumps potassium into the cell. So on the outside of the cell we have a higher concentration of sodium. On the inside of the cell we have a higher concentration of potassium. So these two flow in opposite directions and what that causes, if we look at membrane voltage again, and again I'm going to measure right here with, for my membrane voltage. Here's my voltmeter. What happens with membrane voltage, we're down here at resting, which is 70 millivolts. Up here it's minus 55 millivolts, and that is threshold. There's my dashed line for threshold. If this acetylcholine receptor continues to be stimulated by acetylcholine, then the voltage is going to increase. So if we're on, an, on another neuron here, or a muscle cell, the voltage is going to approach threshold. Now somebody out there is going, wait a minute, in order to go positive we have to let sodium in, but we're letting potassium out as well. And remember, letting potassium out is how we got back to resting potential when we talked about action potential. In this case, since we're letting both go through equally, we're approaching equilibrium. Think about that. Equilibrium is ultimately going to be zero voltage, which is much more positive than minus 70. So by approaching equilibrium, we're causing an excitatory postsynaptic potential. That's the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. 
It's always excitatory. It's going to cause this cell to approach threshold and possibly cause an action potential or activation of this cell. So that's the nicotinic receptor. I'm going to erase this because I'm going to use that again. I'm going to erase the nicotinic receptor. I'm going to put up a different type of uh, acetylcholine receptor. This one's going to be a muscarinic receptor. And I'm going to need more room. I'm just going to draw it in black. This is the muscarinic receptor. And it has bound to it a G protein. Muscarinic receptors, um, you should have learned about cell membrane receptors maybe in the beginning of this class, or you should have learned about them in biology. This particular type of receptor is called a G protein. Coupled receptor. So I've got the protein, and then I have this little G protein attached to it. G protein is made up of a few subunits, uh, beta and gamma subunits, I think. I don't remember totally off the top of my head. But for my students, at least, just know G protein at this point. All right, here comes my acetylcholine again. And it's going to bind to its receptor there. For a muscarinic acetylcholine receptor, when it binds ligand or when it binds acetylcholine, the G protein is released. That G protein is then going to go on and activate or affect another protein. And the muscarinic acetylcholine receptor that I'm talking about specifically is found um, in the heart whoops so I'm just going to say it's it's a cardiac muscarinic acetylcholine receptor that's as far as I'll take it in terms of detail this G protein comes over and it binds it binds to this protein And this protein happens to be a ligand-gated potassium channel. And it allows potassium to leave the cell. What is that going to do to the voltage? Remember that potassium is at a higher concentration inside of the cell. And when we talk about membrane potential, the inside of the cell is negative and the outside is positive. There's positive charges in here even though it's negative. If those positive charges leave, then it's going to become even more negative on the inside of the cell. So my voltmeter reading this membrane is going to show hyperpolarization, more negativity inside of the cell, moving away from threshold or an inhibitory postsynaptic potential.